So this is a, a small seven foot sailing and rowing dinghy uh, that I'm building basically for fun, but also for sort of uh, for the interest of it. It's, there's, there's various aspects of it that are kind of exciting to me. I myself am a, a PhD student, just coming to the end of my PhD, uh, and I'll be starting a postdoc soon as well, so I have a, a little bit of a gap in between, so I thought I'd use it to sort of take advantage of the Dyson Centre slightly and, and have a bit of fun building, building something that I like. Uh, whenever I'm working on it, really, the people stop and go past and ask and I can chat to them about the building methods and about who I am and why I'm doing it and that kind of thing. Um, which is, it's nice, it's yeah. sort of to, to do it in a social environment as well. To sort of, and I, I do want to try and, it is, it is in part at least an attempt to show the undergrads a little bit of what, what like a possibility of what they could do and that kind of thing, sort of demonstrate some techniques. Of it. There's so much of design is almost play, it's making mistakes and getting it wrong and sort of using materials in a, in a way that resembles play quite closely, I think. And in many ways, the Dyson Centre is really about allowing the undergrads the chance to do that. So there are labs and all sorts of other things that use the Dyson Centre, but one of its main purposes is to let the students do stuff for themselves. And I mean, we have this, all kinds of resources they can use in that process. So there's the whole metalworking shop and the woodworking shop behind you. And then there's 3D printing and laser cutting and plasma cutting. And, various CAD and all that kind of thing over in, in that portion over there. Um, and it's, it's giving the undergrads the chance to make a lot of mistakes and, and get things wrong, but then also get them right hopefully in the end as well, which I think really, I think that's quite important. PhD was in biomedical engineering, so my, my undergrad was in fluid mechanics, uh, acoustics, um, and things like that, and my, my PhD was looking at uh, breathing in the chest and how things like wheezing sounds are produced, and understanding the mechanism behind those sounds so that you can improve diagnoses based on those sounds. So stethoscopes are very cheap and uh, not invasive, and they're not radioactive, but they're also not very good. Um, so we'd quite like to improve that situation and be able to take advantage of the fact that they're so easy to use. Um, and so I basically concentrated on wheezing sounds in my, in my PhD and found a, a mechanism for that. So we're publishing a few things for that at the moment. Um, and I'll be uh, continuing with that, but broadening that work um, through the fellowship that I have. So I have a, a junior research fellowship from Magdalen College um, to start in October, um, and I'll be broadening into other types of sounds, so there's also bowel sounds, there's sounds associated with muscles. Our group is already doing work on heart sounds. Um, we use a mixture of techniques, so I mean, so far I've concentrated on uh, sort of understanding sound mechanisms, but we'll be moving on to how we uh, diagnose based on those sounds. We'll be using various machine learning type approaches and that kind of thing, which we've already done to some extent.